What's up guys? Back in the shop tonight to pick up where we left off on the caster and pinion angle discussion. But before we jump into that, uh, I just want to say that I'm going to start answering uh, a single question in every single video uh, from here on out. So if you want to drop a comment in the YouTube channel with any question, it doesn't have to be uh, specific to what we're talking about at the time. Any question at all that you have for me, drop it uh, in the YouTube channel here on any video, and I'll pick one that I will uh, bring up and discuss and answer on uh, every single new video from here and moving on. So, today we are going to pick back up on our front axle, uh, four link suspension, setup, whole nine yards deal, and uh, we're going to cover pinion angle and caster. So. Uh, before we get in depth with both of those, let's just talk about what those mean. So caster is essentially the angle in which the, the top of the ball joint or the kingpin and the bottom of the ball joint or kingpin, uh, the angle of degree that that is laid back or the closer it is to being uh, straight up and down. So if you were to draw an imaginary line uh, through the top of the kingpin or the ball joint, down through the bottom kingpin or ball joint, you would have uh, some sort of angle. Uh, now on a factory truck, that's about three degrees. So that's three degrees laid back, and you're referencing the layback by the top. So the closer to zero, the more the top of this ball joint or kingpin is gonna be up here, and then the further away from zero, the more it moves back. So three degrees is uh, about where they're at on most OEM applications. And the reason that that is, is because the closer to zero that you get with Casker, the more nimble the vehicle becomes. So uh, essentially it's, it's gonna turn easier, it's gonna be more maneuverable uh, in turns and such. The further you lay it back, the more it just wants to track straight. Uh, it's gonna make your turning radius wider and it's not gonna be as nimble. Uh, so it's gonna, it's gonna take some steering advantage away from it. So, uh, as you could think, in a drag racing application, we want to lay that back a little bit. Now, pinion angle uh, is, a lot of people get this wrong. People think that, that it's the angle of your pinion. And although the generic term pinion angle, yes, would be that, uh, when you hear it referred to in the drag racing world, it's not the degree of which your pinion angle is, it's the degree of your pinion angle and the relationship of the drive shaft. So if you have three degrees of positive upward pinion angle and you have negative seven degrees of downward drive shaft angle, you now have negative four degrees of pinion angle. So make sure that you're always understanding that it's the relationship between the pinion and the drive shaft when we're talking pinion angle. Now, where do we want to set caster, where do we want to set pinion angle, and are they related? They are related. Um, in most cases, most of you guys are going to be starting with an axle that has already had the knuckles put on it from the factory. So your relationship between caster and pinion angle is one that's going to be fixed. You're not going to be able to set your pinion angle without altering your caster unless you're building an axle from scratch and you're able to uh, build the pinion angle and the caster on a jig the way that you want it. So um, generally, what you're gonna wanna start to do first is you're gonna wanna get the truck at ride height. Whatever your ride height is gonna be, start there anytime you're measuring pinion angle, and this goes for the rear as well. Uh, so that way your drive shaft is at the correct angle. So you'll measure it with an angle finder, and you'll put the angle finder on the drive shaft to get whatever angle that is, an angle on the pinion angle. And you're gonna wanna shoot for, on a four link application, and this goes for the rear as well, you want about one to two degrees of negative pinion angle. So what that means is the pinion and the drive shaft make a V. Now, you're not gonna be able to get there with a stock axle. There's just no way, it doesn't matter how low you get the truck, you're not gonna be able to get one or two degrees of negative pinion angle with the factory casters and still be able to get your caster uh, where you want it. So caster trumps pinion angle. Uh, and because caster trumps pinion angle, I would start with your caster. So 
to adjust casker forward or back, um, if you have a four length vehicle like mine here, you'll use the top bar to shorten it, to pull it back or lengthen it to push the caster forward. If you have a second, third or fourth gen and you have factory uh, control arms here, you will need to get a set of adjustable uh, control arms. And honestly, that's a good upgrade to get if you're serious about racing anyways, to get rid of the rubber bushings and get you some heim joints to, uh, that way you're not wasting energy within there and you end up with some deflection and you could do some weird things. So the more tight all of this front end stuff is, the better. So you're gonna wanna set the caster as close to seven degrees as you can get without your pinion angle getting totally out of whack. Um, my truck here, I was able to get six degrees out of it and my pinion angle is at uh, negative four degrees. So it's a little bit more pinion angle than what I would like, but caster trumps pinion angle because like I said before, caster is, is the more we lay it back, the easier it's gonna want to just naturally track straight. Um, if you've ever seen some of those uh, front engine dragsters like Don Garlitz used to drive, the Swamp Rats, when they'd back up, the, the steering would do this, but going down the track, it'd be nice and straight. That's because of the caster. When you start to lay your caster back, uh, when you start backing up in reverse, you lose the mechanical ability for it to stay nice and straight. But what you gain is the fact that it just wants to naturally keep the truck straight down track. So I really can't emphasize enough on how important caster is. Uh, the other thing that caster can help solve is if you have a death wobble issue. Uh, a lot of times that's usually worn out parts, but if you have all brand new parts and for some reason your truck just wants to death wobble, check the caster because the closer you get to zero with that, uh, the more prone they are to death wobble. That's why you can take, uh, say, a fourth gen and level it from the factory and change nothing else and run into a death wobble issue because they're, you know, they're so close to zero to start with that when you lift them up and it moves this caster, it gets too close to zero and it wants to death wobble. And then back to pinion angle, we want to keep in mind that the front axle is running in reverse. So the, the more V you have, uh, the, the more negative pinion angle you have, that's actually gonna get worse when you launch because the rear axle would normally uh, try to straighten that out because the third member would actually come up. But on this one, the third member is gonna go down. So you don't wanna really get more than uh, four or five degrees of negative pinion angle, or otherwise you're really gonna be putting that front U-joint in a bind when it launches. So that's why this is a teeter-totter effect between caster and pinion angle. Caster trumps pinion angle up until a degree where pinion angle is going to be an issue. So you might not be able to get to that seven and you're probably definitely not gonna be able to get to that uh, negative one or two on the pinion angle. So uh, we're gonna stop this one here. That's a pretty good bit of information. And honestly, that's a very important part of information uh, with the front axle here. Uh, so I don't wanna do too much and we run into information overload. On the next one, uh, we'll cover uh, camber, toe, and steering ratio. Uh, there's not a whole lot with camber, but there's a, a decent bit with the toe and the steering ratio. Uh, so we will get to that on the next video. Uh, like always guys, uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to drop a comment in the video and uh, tell me anything, ask me any question that you want and I will pick one and we'll answer it on every video from here going forward. So like always guys, thanks and we'll catch you on the next one.